and you know, at year end. So the it'll look like this. Uh, so it started out at 57,000. The dividends decreased it. Hey, okay. you're not, oh, I'll do that. So minus 9,000. You can also do this in the T account if you wanted to. The income plus 30. And um, the depreciation. I, I me actually i should um it, it, it usually is called the uh, amortization and i'll tell you why in a second it's called amortization because you actually don't have the physical asset itself it's it's almost like an intangible so a lot of times i'll call it the um, uh, amortization instead of depreciation and so this, so this will be the ending balance of the investment. So this will be at 1-1 and at 12. And then at 12-31. Whatever that plus comes out to. Seventy-three thousand. So this would be the ending balance on that. Again, you do you do it in a T account too. You know, if you did a T account, you would just do just be these. But uh, yeah, so that'd be any investment account, the balance in it would be 73,000. Question on that? Okay, let's go down here. And this one, I believe this one uh, is, is right out of a CPA exam. Camera's not crooked or something. <laughs> You're looking at my camera thinking, oh my God, this house is tipping over. Um, so uh, I, I think this one came out of a, a CPA exam. I, I'm almost positive it did. But anyway, it, uh, and <laughs> not that it, because the book as a whole has the same thing all the problems are number one. Uh, I think there's one in the book that's similar to this. And, 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 and I'm gonna, I'll say one more thing and I'll show them. The, um, the CPA exam, it used to be an open exam. What they mean by that is that all the questions were available. The, the way you do, you, the way, back in my day when you took the exam, they'd give you the exam and then they'd give you an answer sheet. You'd fill out the answer sheet and turn the answer sheet in. If you wanted the exam, you just brought a self-addressed stamped envelope and they will put the exam in that envelope and they would actually mail you back the exam that you took. So all the CPA questions were out there for everybody to see. So a lot of these things, like as you can imagine, you know, uh, buying stock is, is not anything new. So there's actually a lot of CPA questions out there that are actual CPA questions that are similar to what you put on the CPA exam. 
they, they stopped doing that in 19, 1996, which I know is before <laughs> you guys were born, most of you, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, one question with yeah. respect to the CPA exams. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you take the exams in parts? Uh, and there is there any specific uh, specific period for you to like finish those exams, like complete the exams? I was hearing you have to finish the exams within a year or something. Else. That's good. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's way different. When I went through, it was just they gave it twice a year. Now you can take it uh, almost any time. But yeah, you have a rolling, what they call a rolling 18 months to, uh, to complete all four sections of it. And um, in some ways it's better, in some ways it's not. And I guess it's, you know, it just depends. Um, the nice thing about when I was taking it, it was only twice a year. So you had to be ready on that date, you know, oh, okay. whatever comes up. Well, this problem is now that you have to schedule it. And so, you know, and I, I tell people, you know, you gotta schedule that thing early, as early as you can, because it fills up. So, you know, you might want to take it in July or whatever. And, you know, you, you go, okay, well, you know, in June, I'll go in, you go in June, you're not going to get a July spot, you know, so oh, okay. it, it is a little bit different now. And I mean, the nice thing is you can take them individually, the, the four parts, whereas I, when I went through, you take all four parts at once. Um, you had to, there's a, it's, ancient history but anyway um uh I, I think the way it is now though is um in, in some ways it's better in that you can actually schedule it you know and can take them individually uh, the bad part is is that the exam is more complex it just is it, it's you know i look at back at the stuff that i went through and i thought it was like super complex and now it's even more complex you know? but wow. um uh, yeah and uh, you guys should you know, plan on taking a review course if you're, if you're going through it have you guys been talked to has anyone talked to you guys about the CPA exam? No, not really. Not yet. Not really. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, I, I tell you what, let, let me put some, something together for next week until we can actually kind of just look at the, you know, have something to look at. But uh, mm -hmm. you should at least think about it. You know, people talk about how, you know, it's difficult to go through and, you know, the, I think like the pass rates are about 50% on any given section. That and it's, But People pass it all the time, you know, and uh, it, it certainly is doable. It's just, um, you know, it, yeah, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's still so. I used to do the, the, the um, we used to, when I used to work at uh, Robert Morris University, we had, we had a CPA review that we did. We used the Wiley uh, book for that. Um, and you know what? Actually, I think there's, I think we have available maybe the Rogers CPA review. So I think maybe. May not be a bad idea to uh, see if we can integrate some of that into this course about what kind of stuff they'll actually have on the uh, on the CPA review. So yeah, let, let me get something together next week and we'll um, we'll, we'll go over that. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it, uh, especially get you know at the level you guys are at, it's definitely something you know, you probably want to think about. Okay. Too much. Yeah, that would mess up too much. Okay, so anyway, this is a uh, similar one. You, I think this is it came off the CPA exam. And this one, you'll notice that they've kind of condensed it all for you. You know, they instead of all this up here where you're kind of calculating it all yourself, sometimes they say, okay, here's the, you know, here's the stuff. What do you do with it? Okay, uh, I tell you what, let's do the easy parts first. Joan bought a interest for 25% uh, interest for 30, 300,000. So we can certainly do that one. By the way, you guys, you don't need to put this in there, this asset going up. I, <laughs> from, from teaching accounting uh, 210 and 211, I'm used to putting it. 
Okay, so she paid three hundred thousand. No, uh, the company paid three hundred thousand. And imagine it doesn't say anything, but imagine it's cash. I don't know if I have enough electric spots there. Okay, so uh, this is an asset going not up. This is going down. Sorry about that. Um, so one asset's going up, one asset's going down. Uh, Erickson had net income of 100,000. Okay, let's do, uh, I think we're doing the dividends first. We'll do the dividends first. You can do it either way. Uh, the only reason why I do dividends first is a lot of times dividends are paid before the end of the year. So a lot of times they'll, they'll naturally be first. So you know, if the dividends are paid in June or something like that, uh, there's no, Nothing besides that. And it looks like these are both done on the same day, 1231, which we just talked about before. But so anyway, okay, so let's do the dividends. So dividends are cash going up. It's a hundred thousand. No, it's not sixty thousand. Times twenty five percent. Fifteen thousand. Okay, now the kind of weird part. What goes on the other side here? So our cash went up. What goes on the second? What goes into the credit? Investment equity. Um, well, yeah, the uh, the investment investment equity is going to go down. And that's, that's kind of strange at first when you think about it, but um, it's sort of like we own so much of it that, you know, it's just taking out of, from one thing we, you know, from one asset out of, to another. It's sort of like reversing what's up here. You know, up here we gave three hundred thousand cash, and it goes into our investment, and then we got fifteen thousand of it back. So we just redu reduce our investment, and again, it comes about because we own so much of it. You know, you own so much of of the company that when it it's almost like taking money out of the piggy bank. You take money out of a piggy bank, you're not any richer. You know, you get the money in your hand, but the piggy bank is now worth whatever fifteen thousand dollars less. So. You know, it's that weird kind of thing that you're really not any better off than you were before because it's just, you know, yeah, you have fifteen thousand dollars cash as an asset, but your other asset is worth fifteen thousand dollars less. Okay. There, I made it invisible, isn't that nice? Okay. Okay. Um, let's do the um, let's do the income. So okay. 
dividend free. And we'll make income blue, I guess. Okay, so let's do the income. So income. We will increase our investment because when a company makes money, we make money. So when they have income, we have income. So this will be investment. I want to check something here. It should be investment income. Okay, investment income. Good. Okay. And the question is, how much is it? So we had, oh, I know, I'm going to be lazy. So the investment income is 25,000. So our investment will go up by 25,000. Our, our share of the income is 25,000. And we'll pick up the income of 25,000. Okay, now the last thing we gotta take care of is this. All right, we paid 300,000. The book value was 260. Now notice that we didn't, we didn't have to calculate that like up here, you know, up here we can calculate our, uh, well, I mean, uh, the book value won't do there. Well, here, you know, here's the book value, the stuff over here. Um, we don't need to do that. They've already done it for us. So they say, okay, the book value, what you did. So the excess, and this is only for us, is 40,000. Now, let me make, make this clear. So this is 25%. And this is 25 also 25%. So notice when it comes to this excess, it's only giving it for us. We don't we don't have to do the twenty five percent of whatever the you know it is because it's already in twenty five percent. So we don't have to reduce our ownership. You know, on the other ones we do okay. The, the income was a hundred, but we get twenty five percent of that, right? So we have to multiply by twenty five percent. Well, this one is it's already in the smaller. 25% uh, chunk, uh, uh, you know, for both our, what we paid for it and for what the book value of that was. So it's kind of confusing in that way. All right, so, and the rest of it went to a patent that was gonna last for 10 years. Okay, so here's what we did. So here's the cost. Yeah, we're coming to the screen. 
25% we paid 300,000. 12, we can't see your screen. Oh, that would be a problem. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's uh, me being silly here. Okay, so the cost for 25%, the book value of 25%. Was three uh, two sixteen. Okay, so uh, the excess and in this case it's a patent would be. Forty thousand. So that forty thousand is the uh, excess, and again, that is tw you know at twenty five percent. The strength by percent of the so that forty thousand relates directly to us. Okay, now here's the thing: the pan is only going to last for ten years, or I should say, only, but it's it's going to last for ten years. So. We're going to divide that by 10 and we're going to come up with down here. We're going to have to expense a little in this case, amortize a little more. Okay, so it's sort of like this up here that the investment income is going to go down. So we're going to have our um, investment income is going to be reduced by this. It's going to be reduced by. Um, 40,000, oops, that's not 40,000 <laughs> times, oops, divided by 10 years. Hey, look, I put it in, I put it in there twice. <laughs> did that. Anyway, okay, so let's divide by 10 years. Okay, so our income, notice our income is going to go down by 4,000. And our investment Let's go down to four thousand. And so our twenty five thousand is really being reduced here, the, uh, our share of the income. So our income from this thing really was what? 
uh, 21,000 because we have this excess patent, you know, this could be going down for the next 10 years, uh, $4,000 a year. At the end of 10 years, we won't, we'll stop doing this. This one down here, after 10 years, it'll stop. So another thing sometimes I'll ask on CPA exam is what was the income for it? And the income from you know, the, this equity investment would have been uh, 21,000. 25,000 minus the 4,000. Any question on that? Okay, let's jump into the next one. Okay, this next one I'm going to I'm going to butt in for just a moment. I'll, I'll let you guys take a look at it, but there's also something weird on here, and that is this goodwill. So there's a copyright. Uh, okay, so we got that goodwill, and the question is, what is goodwill? For accounting purposes, goodwill only comes about when one company buys another company. And it comes about because it, it's, it's when a company is run very well or has some kind of a, um, a system or plan or whatever, a name that allows them to be more profitable than a normal company of their size. For example, McDonald's. McDonald's Hamburger Place has a name recognition and that sort of thing that, uh, that means it's, it's going to be more profitable than, say, a normal hamburger place. A normal hamburger place will make a certain amount of money. If it's got McDonald's, if it's, if it's a McDonald's franchise, and again, you know, they've got the name on it, people see the arches, they, they drive in, whatever, um, it's worth a lot more. You know, they'll have the same grills and the same, you know, fryers and all this other stuff. But they'll make a lot more money on using those same assets than another company. So when you buy them, the people that would, you know, at, at McDonald's are not idiots. They know that, okay, we're making, you know, we're making a lot more money than a regular hammer place. You have to pay extra for it. That's goodwill. It's an intangible, but you know, if, if something is run very well or has a name recognition or whatever it is, that makes them um, more profitable than you would, than, than just the assets, right, just the, the, the fair value of the assets, uh, that's going to come into goodwill. You're going to pay extra for that. Now, the goodwill, um, for what we're doing, actually, it doesn't make any difference. I'll tell you why in a minute. But it will uh, in the next chapter. <laughs> the next chapter, we're going to have to do something with goodwill. Uh, this chapter, we really don't. And the reason why is goodwill is not depreciated or amortized. It just sits there forever. So if you pay extra, unless something happens, you know, McDonald's, I don't know, whatever. McDonald's has a food poisoning and everybody, you know, no one wants to go there, then you may have, you may have to write it off. But for the most part, Goodwill just sits there forever. And so we're going to talk about, you know, so Goodwill is also a lot of times called um, unidentified assets. So if it's an unidentified asset, what they're generally talking about there is Goodwill means the fair value of the assets are whatever they are, we have to pay more than that because of the way the place is run. Okay, let me make sure I share my screen. This, this is weird. Okay, there we go. Uh, I gotta make sure that it actually registers the click. Okay, so let's take a look at what this is. I'm gonna be a little lazy and copy this from up here. Okay, so this is kind of what's going to happen on this one. Uh, this is for 35%. So this is 420. So 
plus 370. And the excess uh, asset for uh, copyright was 30,000. So the unidentified assets that we call goodwill. So how much is the are the unidentified assets the goodwill? How much are they worth? So if 420 we paid for it. The book value was 370, but you'll notice that 370 plus 30 is what 400. So there's a uh, so how much would the goodwill be? Twenty thousand. Yep. Yeah. So the other twenty thousand. You know, this is that unidentified goodwill. This is again, they're not tangible. You know, well, well, I. I Copyrights aren't tangible either, but they have a value that is associated with that copyright. Whereas goodwill is simply that the organization is being run better than normal. Now, again, there is no amortization. You don't write that off at all. It just sits there like a lump. So in our 420,000, 20,000 is goodwill that just sits there forever. So this is the only one that you have to worry about the um, here is five year. How did you get a twenty thousand for the goodwill? Good question. Maybe uh, I should maybe do it a little bit differently. Oops. Let me show you this. So the total excess assets that we had. Oh, So the difference between these two is 50,000, right? So the total excess assets are 50,000. Well, the question is, well, okay, so, you know, 420, the difference between those two. So we are, we paid an extra, extra 50,000 well, what do those go into? Well, that's what it comes down here. They tell us that you know, 30,000 is for the copyright. Well, that still leaves another 20,000 left. And so that would be the goodwill. Sometimes called unidentified asset. Of 20,000. Yeah, and by, and by the way, that unidentified, that's not my terminology. That's a term that they, you'll see commonly used. To me, it's not unidentified, it's, it's goodwill, but sometimes you'll see it say the unidentified asset. What they mean by that is it has to do with the overall way the place is run. It's not specific to this patent, this equipment, this whatever. So it's not specific as far as which um, chunk of the assets it is. That, that what they mean is that the overall operation has goodwill in this case of 20,000. So the total uh, excess assets are 50,000. So, you know, when we find, uh, you know, here's it's not what I wanted. Hold on. <laughs> Insert a box. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to do a, here we go. You know, so this 50,000, you know, thir uh, 30 of that is, you 
a copyright. And so the other unidentified amount is goodwill. Oh, uh, by the way, on the on the test, I again, I put that on the test as an extra credit point. I thought three actually it's three extra credit points. But um, so if you want to you know take a crack at it. now, truthfully, because it doesn't get amortized, we don't you know here's the copyright. Let me use the life five years. Uh, the goodwill has an infinite life, so it doesn't get written off. So we really don't do anything with it, at least in this uh, in, for chapter one, but this copyright will be written off over five years. Okay. Well, let's see if you can figure out this one.
Okay, I think that's what uh, you should have gotten. I'm gonna check my numbers to make sure. And again, we don't do anything with that um, as far as the income. We don't do anything with the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, uh, goodwill. Hey, Chris, on that thing. I'll put it back up. So I think what uh, we'll do is maybe take a break. If you guys want to get started on the uh, on the practice exam, Maybe a little more involved. Yeah, you get the good well, we're gonna have to get a little more involved. Okay, that'll be fine. We'll we'll go through it though. Just a question for the one that we just did. Yeah. Um why didn't you include uh the four hundred and twenty? Oh, this is just the income. Oh, now, okay. if we wanted to do the investment account, we would definitely put the 420. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it up, though. Because uh, truthfully, though, on the CPA exam, a lot of times they will ask, you know, what's the ending balance in the. Uh, not that one, this one. You know, what's the ending balance in it? Uh, let me put that in. Uh, so, yeah, this would be the 420. And, and, and so that same amount, those same amounts will be in there too. So let's see, 420. Uh, the dividend for what, 35? And that's obviously not the right number. Four forty nine, I think. No, I checked that number too. Oh, <laughs> oopsie daisy. Let's try that again. So we need thirty five, fifty five minus. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think this is it. So the ending uh, investment doesn't mean the assets would be this. This would be would be would be on our income statement. Any income statement? Yeah. And this down here, this will be on our balance sheet. Okay, so let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll um, say be back.
Uh, about 705, maybe. Oops, oops, oops. Is it already put the PM there? All right.
Is anyone that does not have the practice exam? Now, here's the tricky part on this one. The tricky part on this one is kind of uh, Uh, an extra step. And that is, we need to find the book value. We need to find the book value of our investment to know how much it's going to go to goodwill. Right? So we need to find the book value of it. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So. <clears throat> So the total book value is, we had 155 total assets, liabilities, um, 50. This is a total net book value. Okay, so this company has a book value of 100,000. Right. Uh, 155,000 is the good stuff. Assets, 155,000, but we have to pay off 55,000. So the net uh, book value is 100,000. We bought 30%. One eighty five. Oh, for the over here, yeah, for the fair value total assets, yeah, it's 
185. Okay, so yeah, so this would be, um, let me put this in here. So it's what, 20 and 10. Yeah, 185. <laughs> And fifty five. Uh, net fair value would be uh, one eighty five minus uh, fifty five is. Uh, thirty percent will be thirty nine thousand. Uh, so is uh, okay. Yeah, so it's one hundred thirty, right? Thirty. Oh, wait. No. It, it, it's like this. So 185 minus 55 is one. Oh, yeah, you're right. 130 and then times a 30%, right? Yep. And now this would be the net fair value. Right. You said what, 39,000, you said? 39,000, yeah. Now this fair value is really for the, uh, only for the identified assets. You know, that's for these two in here. Let's see here. So you'll notice something. You know, actually, the more I think about it, uh, I probably didn't need to do the fair, the net uh, book value. You know what? I'm sorry. I apologize. You need that. This is the net fair value of identified assets. Oh, yeah, with identified assets. Uh, I guess I'll just go down. Wait a minute. So, paid fifty thousand. We have thirty nine thousand of identified assets. Not identified assets. So, how much is the goodwill? Yeah. So investment in the equity is uh, fifty thousand. Net identified assets. Thirty nine thousand. So how much the, uh, the assets are not identified? Eleven thousand. Thank 
fix this. Yeah, so we have these, uh, you know, and these up here are the uh, excess assets. Put these in. Oops, oops, oops. You know, so these are the excess ones up here that we have. And you kind of, uh, you know, prove that out too. There's 30,000 excess assets and we get 30% of it. So that's what an extra nine, I, I erased it, but we had 30,000 for the net. We don't need it. It didn't occur to me that we wouldn't. All right, so that would be the goodwill. And now for this problem, we don't do anything with it because it has infinite life. What do we have here? So the uh, equipment has an excess uh, or useful life of 10 years. So we divide this by 10. How did we do it before? I can't remember. Well, I do the same as I did it up here. I don't. It's confusing enough without me uh, making it worse. Okay, we did the depreciation and then took our share of the depreciation. Okay, that makes sense. So we'll divide this by 10 years. thousand a year. Divide this by six years. And what I was thinking when it came to six years. Thirty minutes, thirty percent. Okay, it'll it'll work out. Uh, what's ten thousand divided by six? Uh, six. Uh, what is it? Ten, Uh, 1,667, You can put these both in separately. You could also put them in the same one if you wanted. I'm, I'm probably gonna put them in separately just so you can kind of see where they are. I might need to add a few rows here. Okay, so let's start entering this stuff. All right, uh, so 3%, 50,000, so, oops. What's the year here? Twenty twenty two. All right. <clears throat> so pay fifty thousand for it. Cash is going down by 50,000. At this point, we're no better or worse off than we were. Just traded one asset for another. Uh, let's do dividends first. It doesn't matter which one you do first, by the way. Uh,
Okay. So we picked up our dividends, uh, pick up the uh, income. Okay, so that would be our I'm going to put those other two in separately. Oh, <laughs> I'm on the next page. Okay, uh, that'll be fine. Okay, so. First one we'll do is the uh, equipment. And we have 2000 depreciation. We get uh, some of the way can make this. So depreciation, $2,000, depreciation $2,000. So we get 3% of it. Six hundred. So we have to take it out of our income. So this is increasing the income up here. So down here we'll have income going down. Six hundred. And we'll do the same thing for Copy both of those two. So the um, patents. The organization patents. Man. <laughs> uh, 
So that would be it. And again, notice the weird thing about this, uh, using this equity method. And that is that that equity account is in every single journal entry. So, you know, using this method, you have to have that investment account in every single journal entry that has to be involved in it. Which, you know, in one way is, is kind of strange, but it also makes it somewhat easier because, you know, yeah, you really only have to find what the other account is. You know, you don't have to find what, you know, because the investment account is going to be half of that journal entry, whatever it is. Uh, by the way, if you were to combine those two, that'd be fine. So if you put both those in together as 1100, that's fine. I put them in separately just to kind of, I don't know. Uh, I have a question for yeah. their investment income. Why for both? Um, the depreciation and the amortization. Why is it minus? Is it not supposed to be fun? Because it's, it, these are like additional expenses. Yeah. And so here's what's really kind of going on with it. Um, you know, when, when you bought the when you buy the investment, you always buy everything at fair value. You know, again, you know. It, you, when, you're, when you're purchasing you know, whatever the company or whatever it is, you may pay fair, fair value. And to some extent, it doesn't even matter what the book value is that the other company has on there because, you know, for example, you may have a building that you paid $50,000 for in 1962, you know, that now is worth $12 million or something. That book value doesn't really mean much, okay? But now notice that the original company is going to be depreciating it at that lower amount. Now, as a new owner coming in, you're paying that higher amount. Because you're paying that higher amount, it's like it's a you know additional asset on the books that needs to be depreciated because it's you know it's part of the other uh, asset. So it's you know in some ways it's good that it's it's you know it's gone up in value, whatever that it's it's worth it's worth more than it's on their books for. That's a good thing. However, that also means you have to depreciate it more. Yeah, it's got more earning potential and that's probably why it's bumped up. But at the same time, now you have to depreciate more because the the, com the original company, you know, they're not depreciating. Well, here, let's go back to the problem. Up. You know, the original company, when it comes to like say this equipment, um, they're depreciating it based on 60,000. As new owners, when we come in and we buy it, we bought the equivalent of it at 80,000. So the income, this income from the, uh, you know, this income from, uh, I forget what this company's called, Swan Song. So the income, it has depreciation, but it's only based on 60,000, not on the 80,000 that we had to pay. So this income is really being generated on equipment that's worth 80,000 and patents that are worth 25. You know, this, this is really being generated on more assets than they're showing on their book values. So when we go through here, we have to say, okay, well, wait a minute, our portion of it, you know, this is what the depreciation should be based on the fair values. And so our portion of it should be reduced by whatever our portion of those, that additional depreciation is. It's a little hard to see on, on, in, in this, in the one you're buying a percentage of the company, like 35%. In next chapter, we'll talk about what, what happens when you buy 100%. And then it becomes a little bit more obvious because you'll have the two companies operating separately. 
and you'll have the subsidiary, the, the company that you purchased, will be operating just like they've been with the book values of whatever they are. You know, and when you bring them onto your books, you're gonna say, okay, well, wait a minute, we didn't pay, you know, 1974 prices for the building. We paid 2021 prices for the building, whatever it was. So you'll have these differences. Um, and quite honestly, the earning potential is, you know, there too. And by the way, that, that's one of the problems with accounting in general is that we use these historical values. Um, you know, and it, it makes companies look much more profitable a lot of times than, than uh, you would expect uh, because they're actually, they're, a lot of times their assets, especially if they're real estate or something like that, they can be absolutely huge. You know, so, you know, sometimes you'll have these assets that are understated. Another one I can tell you about is patents, things like patents and copyrights. Generally speaking, if you have a, you know, you develop a patent, let's say it's worth $5 million. You generally expense all those expenses into that before you, you know, go so you may have this patent on the book for you know, whatever the registration cost is, $5,000, when really it's worth 5 million. And it's throwing off revenues and, you know, income as if it's $5 million. You know, so, you know, the historical costs are kind of a problem in accounting. And you say, well, why don't we use fair value? Don't we just market it? People don't like that either because they say, okay, well, wait a minute, you're just going to jack up the price of whatever you're selling and have all this extra income. But that really didn't happen either. So I don't know what the solution is to that. But yeah, the, uh, the historical costs, a lot of times, don't really reflect what's on, what the actual earning potential is for a place. And again, good news is that you know it's worth more. Bad news is, that means you have to depreciate or amortize more and it's gonna reduce the income. So the income here would be uh, 7,500 minus this, minus that, whatever it comes out to. 6,400, I guess. Any questions? Okay, now, again, on the test, this goodwill thing, this will be extra credit. You don't have to figure it out. on the test. And I think it's, I think it's plus three points. Put it on there. But it's actually, uh, so again, if you, if you have trouble figuring this out, don't worry too much about it. It's not, you can still get a hundred on it uh, without knowing that at all. And notice, because, there's nothing down here, you know, there's no goodwill in those two. Because there's, it doesn't have any impact on the income, you really don't need to know it for this problem anyways. Um, you know, how to, how to calculate that. Questions? Hey, hey, look, done early. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll send out the, uh, oh, oh, I think, let me make sure that I put the, um, I don't know if I put this all in there yet. Uh, yeah, you did. Okay, so the uh, handout due by Friday, practice exam due by Friday. We just finished both those up, and the exam is due by next Friday also. And again, I think I mentioned this before, but if uh, the due dates are simply there to, that's when it goes into your grade to date for the class. It does not mean you can't turn it in after. So if you get to the fourth and you can't get it in, you don't have to, you know, don't panic at all because you can get it, you can turn it in later. It just won't be in, you won't have a grade until it gets turned in. So the due dates are not hard due dates that, you know, after that you can't turn it in. It just means that's when it's gonna go into your grade calculation. All right, any questions? So I'll send out the exams in probably uh, like 10, 15 minutes. And whatever exam you get in your email account, that's the exam you need to turn in. So if you get A or B or C or whatever it is, that's what you're gonna turn in. And uh, that's it. Any questions? It's gonna be very similar to the practice exam. No questions? <laughs> Don't ask any questions. Bad one. 10 minutes. All right.
So uh, I will go ahead and send those out and I will uh, talk to you guys in a week's time. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.